I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Central America. Today, we're going to be explaining a little bit about the CA4, or the Central American 4, Border Control Agreement. This has caused a lot of confusion for a lot of people because it is unusual and not something that people are generally used to or aware of. And if you're going to be traveling to Central America, it might be pretty important for you to simply understand how this works as it'll affect everything that you do. So we're going to get to that right after that bump. The CA4, or Central America 4 Border Control Agreement, is an agreement between the countries of Nicaragua, El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala to work together in a common border zone. So this is not unlike the Schengen in Europe, and in some ways even like the United States, where you have four independent states that work together. Now, unlike some things like the United States, where you have single foreign policy and shared defense, we don't have that in uh, the CA4. But what we do have is a single transit zone in which the residents of, the citizens of the CA4 are able to move freely between the four countries and tourists who come to the zone get a single visa to move between the countries. It is important to note that this only counts when you're talking about land borders. If you get into a plane and fly, they treat it as a hard border because often flights have people coming in from multiple places. It's just really complicated to try to treat uh, flights between those countries as internal flights. So those are treated externally. So if you're flying between the countries, to some degree, you'll go through border control, but there's some important things that may or may not count. And I do this regularly because I live in the zone and uh, a lot of people get confused by the way that visas work. So if you're coming into any of these countries, you normally will get a 90-day tourist visa if you're just a tourist coming in, uh, especially if you're coming from North America. El Salvador, however, started giving out 180 days. Nicaragua will give out 90, but extend you to 180. So they're all a little bit different and they have their own processes. As long as you're in your first 90, they all work the same. Once you get beyond the 90, they may or may not respect extensions given by the other countries. So be aware that your visa, when you get into, say you fly into El Salvador, you get 180 days, you wanna travel into another country like Nicaragua, you may only have 90 days to work with because they only gave you 90 at entry, even though El Salvador or gave you 180. Confusing for sure, uh, but something to be aware of. We've seen people run into these problems because they tried to move around the zone uh, in awkward ways for really long periods of time. It is unfortunately because it's part of the backpacking uh, path. Uh, these countries are all very popular to spend a lot of time in. So it's really easy to go over 90 days within the zone. So many people do it without thinking because they don't realize that they're not switching uh, time limits when they go between countries. People are used to going between countries and having whatever agreement they have start over, but they don't here. If you enter, like I did the last time I came into the CA4, I entered at Guatemala. My stamp on my passport says Guatemala. If I then move between, which I did from Guatemala to El Salvador, I don't get a new stamp. And that day that I spent in transit, now I have 89 days. I don't get 90 days again, I'm at 89 days. I then transited from El Salvador to Nicaragua, and now I'm here in Nicaragua, still on a stamp from Guatemala on 90 days counting down. Now I can still get my extensions in Nicaragua, not a problem. And now I'm a resident, so really not a problem. I can stay in all these countries indefinitely because of that, so that's fine, that's me. But if you are doing these things and you're coming in like this, it's important to understand how this works because people constantly get this wrong. So. When you're looking at this zone and you want to do a border run, that is you want to step over the border and reset your visa. So let's say you got 90 days, you want to just get another 90 days. You don't want to deal with extensions or anything like that. You just want to get a fresh start uh, all over again. So you need to go into a full bordering country. You can't go between these countries to do any resets because they're one border. There's no official border between them. That's, that's where people get hung up. Yes, there is a spot called the Frontera, but it is not a full national border. It's an internal barrier. Uh, so it's a bit different. If you're going to the south, where Nicaragua touches Costa Rica, that is a full border. If you go into Costa Rica and return, you are resetting your visa. If you go to the northwest, that is Mexico, from that is from Guatemala, that will reset your visa. If you go to the east, that will be Belize, that will reset your visa. Those are the only three land crossings that can reset your visa in this zone. Now, of course, you can get on a plane and go any number of places, Mexico, the United States, Panama, Colombia, and those things will reset your passport. Uh, I'm sorry, reset your visa uh, without a problem. 
So the whole idea here is that this is a single border control zone. And once you're inside of it, you are inside. Think of it as being like inside the Schengen in Europe or inside the United States or inside Canada. And you're moving between states or provinces or EU nations. And you don't have a reset as you move around. If you go to Europe, you're going to go into France and then you're going to go visit Spain. You want to visit Italy and Greece and Germany and the Netherlands. And you're like, yes, I'm going to backpack for forever. And then you realize you get 90 days in all of it. That often throws people off when they first go to Europe, that moving around to all these countries does not give you 90 days in each one. Same thing, you get 90 days to come into the US, you go into New York, and then you drive out to California, you go through state after state on the way. I hope you guys can hear the rain coming down. It is suddenly really heavy as we're doing the video. Uh, each state does not reset your visa. Your time is your time in the United States. So in the same way, it is your time inside the Central America for that matters. And, and it's amazing how often I get asked about this and how often people are like, I don't understand. Why is Honduras not resetting your password, your passport, your visa? Why are you not getting a new passport stamp at each of these places? And sometimes you will get a stamp and sometimes you won't. And we just lost power temporarily, but I'm on battery for this one. So we're just going to keep on going because I don't actually need power for anything right now. And you can see my computer stay on because we're on, on UPS. Uh, so it's a, it's a very good agreement in the area. It allows these countries to work together. Uh, it allows for tourism to be a lot more fluid. It allows residents to have a broader range of options that they're able to take advantage of in the region. And it, it really is a good thing, but it throws off travelers who are looking to find ways to maintain their visas. Uh, and it just does something that's very confusing. And there aren't actually that many places in the world that do this. And so because of that, that can be uh, a bit of a problem. We only lost power there for a couple seconds, but my studio lights do not turn back on when they lose power. So, and I don't have any way to look around because everything else just stays on because of our UPSs. So I couldn't tell whether the power come back on. Then I noticed my laptop had not stopped charging. So it only been just enough to turn off the light. Anyway, so it's an important thing to understand and know. If you're gonna be coming to the region, just be aware that these four countries, which is a fairly large zone in the very popular tourist area, all function as a single area and you need to know exactly where these borders are before you come and so you can plan your time accordingly. What you don't want to do is enter it at uh, Guatemala, go to uh, El Salvador, end up spending a ton of time in El Salvador and find yourself in the middle and then having to get out suddenly and having to go a couple countries to get out. Because if you're in El Salvador or Honduras, neither country has a border to the outside world. Only Nicaragua has the border to Costa Rica and Guatemala has to Belize and to Mexico. So unless you're in one of the, the northernmost or the southernmost country in the region, you need to get to one of those in order to get out to reset your passport. And if you're in, say, El Salvador and you're on your 180 days and then you want to go into Nicaragua, which only gives you 90 at the border, and you need to get to Costa Rica on the other side of it, you could run into complicated problems because you didn't deal with your, your dates ahead of time. So the easiest thing to do is if you're going to be a backpacker or just a traveler, if you're, not, if you're going to be living in the zone, then extensions and all kinds of things make life easy. But if you're a tourist and you're going to be just in the zone doing backpacker things or whatever, plan on getting over one of those hard borders every 90 days and just make everything simple because the extensions in one may not apply to another. Uh, the longer than 90s may not apply. You may run into complicated situations. You may run into ambiguous situations, which is probably more likely what the actual issue is. Not worth it. Do the 90 day thing and just plan around it. None of this region is so big that 90 days is a problem. All right, it's very small countries. Distances aren't that big. And only if you're in the middle too, Honduras and El Salvador, does it become a problem that you may need to get quite some distance to get to a border. There are shuttles, there's planes, you can take a taxi, you have a lot of options. Just make sure you give yourself enough time that you're not running into problems. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.